bear with me. There's a recording in progress and here we go. Um, um, Stephanie, it says that the host has disabled participant sh screen sharing. So can you uh, open that up? Yes, one, one moment, let's see. Okay, that should be ready. Great, here we go. Thank you. Okay, now, where is my thing? Right here. Bottom share screen. Uh, share. I clicked okay. on that one. Yeah, click on that. Share. And then, and then I'm gonna to go to- The top and then full screen. Full screen. Under view. Under view. Uh -huh. Inner full screen. Okay, and there we are. Okay. All right. Here we go. It's a big subject and it's called Mother Consciousness and the Great Mother Archetypes. And uh, we will move along. Um, we have a lot of material to cover. I'll try not to go too fast because I get nervous and I go fast. But the, the three mother archetypes that we're going to cover are the good mother, which like the nurturing mother. And then the death mother, which I have examples of the teeth mother and the stone mother. And of course, our wonderful ecstatic mother, the dancing mother, the abundant mother. And these are three images from those three mothers. So, so first we'll talk about consciousness and then we'll go into the three mothers. Um, there's an overarching consciousness called the feminine, and there's two characters of the feminine, uh, according to Nauman uh, in his book, The Great Mother. There's elementary and transformative. And elementary ones were, I'm going to go over first, and those are the ancient ones, and the transformative, and then we'll go into the transformative. This first picture uh, is of uh, uh, Carl Jung's, a patient of drawing of an elementary mother. And um, from a psychological perspective, he analyzed this drawing is that the, the, the male who did this drawing was stuck in the elementary mother, uh, the, 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 the great round as it's called in antiquity. And so we'll, we'll delve into that more as we go along. So, in every society known, a matriarchy has preceded the present patriarchy. That's from a gentleman from 1861 in a book called Mother Right. And a lot of Nauman's material came from him. It's B-A-C-H-O-F-E-N, Bashian. I can't say it, but anyway, that's an important thing to say that uh, we were, um, this concept means that every adult was once inside a mother and every society is inside the great mother. And that's, that's like small and big at the same time. So uh, it's, it's, and it's in the, in the elementary mother uh, that this all occurs in, and I love this particular image. She's so sassy with her breasts and her big belly, her great brown belly. And she is the mother absorption. Think of that word, you're consumed by the mother in the great round. Though that's the, that's the concept of the great mother. And the vessel is the central figure of the feminine. Uh, and again, you see, it's a great round. It's, it's, it, it's things are inside. Let's see what. It's a womb. It's like an inside womb and it holds fast to everything in there. It won't let it spill out. And, and it's inside. It's a dark unknown and it's an unconscious world. It's the instinct and night 
and its and its foundation is the elementary feminine. It's stable and unchanging and very conservative. Motherhood dominates. And I'm going to now show a, a series of these elementary feminine vessels. This is a Neolithic goddess. And you can see she's got the big uh, thighs and belly and uh, uh, holding, holding her belly. And it, it, it's like a, a her, she is the vessel. So this mother consciousness was in the world first and the moon, the knife and care for the dead, intuition and ecstasy, the north side of the mountain in shadow, the left side of the river always in shadow, the valley of the world, the cortex manilian brain, the owl, the dove, turtles, affection for nature and feeling on the left side of the body. These are characteristics of the elemental mother. And I love this slide from Bali, Goddess Pat, uh, which seems odd to me. We try, I tried to find out what that meant, but I couldn't. But she says, I have breasts, therefore I am. This is very important to think. So when you compare a mother consciousness uh, to father consciousness, that's the big difference right there, this concept of oneself. And does she look at her great round, her belly and those incredible breasts, quite wonderful. So there's a poem by uh, 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 Tao in the Ti Chang that says, all around me, men are working. The main difference is this, I take no part. The main difference is this, I prize the breast of the mother. Here's another from Yugoslavia and you can see it's much more ornate, but it has the two big breasts and uh, it's a vessel uh, from the Bronze Age. And this is from Mexico, Aztec earth goddess, and you can actually see the moons. And uh, the, at the bottom where she's sitting, she's giving birth. So now do you have an understanding, say to yourself, I have a, a, a concept to play with in your imagination of what it means to be the great round and what it means to be element, the elementary feminine, these cons, these, uh, attributes and characteristics that we just went over. So the great round is an important concept going forward throughout the whole talk. And uh, I, I wanted to bring in uh, many as many cultures as I could find and, and a, a Native American culture really speaks to the great round. The Dakota tribal elder Black Elk in 1931 wrote in Black Elk Speaks, Everything that powers the world always works in a circle. The wind, bird's nest, that is how we all live in the sacred hoop of the nation. Black Elk was living at, in 1931 in a white square house given to him by the American government. He said, it is a bad way to live for there can be no power in a square. Our power is gone and we are dying. Really sad. And here's a painting I did uh, when I lived in uh, Okmulgee, Oklahoma. It's a Creek Indian nation. And I was allowed to go to a lot of the mother dances. And this is the ribbon mother dances. And there's the grandmother and uh, children. All These are all females. Um, um, and I love doing this. I must have been 25 when I was doing this. <laughs> but. Uh, I left that little girl in the middle, but they always go around and around and around in a circle while the drum beats happening. But now things are all about to change. Masculine consciousness is born of the dragon fighting. The hero myth of masculine consciousness is described in Greek mythology as many centuries of fighting against the mothers. 
They needed to win this heroic dragon fight. It was the only way for masculine consciousness to emerge and be released from the elementary room of the great mother, be released from this great round. Masculine consciousness requires this struggle um, to attempt and win the dragon fight. It's the same thing as to achieve masculine consciousness of light, removing man out of the dark, out of the dark unconscious. It's just an epic, epic fight. Here's a medieval uh, uh, slaying the dragon. Wonderful image. So this, we now into father consciousness. I think, therefore I am. Very different from I have breasts, therefore I am. And this consciousness is light and Christ is on the right side of God and Apollo, the patriarchy God has golden rays. In fact, gold is worshiped in the favor of the right hand over the left and mountaintops over valleys, the square over the circle, straight roads, clear, cold south side of the mountain, right side of the river, always in light. What is outside and empowers in setting up boundaries rules, morality, commandments to reach the spirit. The neurocortex thinking part of the brain began to be developed. I think, therefore, I am. There's a uh, Japanese etching, slaying the dragon. And there's this poem that I found from King James' poem in Job. I come out of the mother naked, and I will be naked when I return. The Lord gave and the Lord takes away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So now father consciousness is completely captured. Uh, it has, it is, it, with this dragon slain and this big fight. Uh, Abraham religions, it's now I came, it's about the Lord. Uh, so it is father consciousness that is afraid of being captured. Again, and we can see that what's going on today in the world. They're afraid of being trapped and enslaved into the darkness of the great round. Afraid that the white spark of ego consciousness that is so hard won through centuries of dragon fight fighting will not survive. Mother consciousness is more confident that the tight thread of bright sparks will remain. And this is the hope that when father consciousness embraces the spiritual method, it is at its highest, at its worst is when it is crude and rejects the spiritual mother, destroying the great mother with aggression and domination. And we can see that happening right now. The problem for culture is we cannot just have one mother, we get them all. Good mother, death mother, and ecstatic mother. And so this is a painting of Adam and Eve that I did that it talks about the, the, the creation myths. And you can see the snake and the apple almost like a time bomb in her hand. And the, the male is has holding up a, a, a leaf with birds. And the fear for the father consciousness and masculine uh, consciousness is the concentration of mother energies. They, they are afraid of that, that they won't be strong enough. And uh, that, I'm going to skip. Uh, that brings us to the good mother. So we were going to break, but I don't think we need one. So we're going to go to the good mother now. The good mother archetype and here's a beautiful picture this is not mine it's one of my children's uh children's books um of mother uh, animal mothers and their babies the good mother is good because she threatens no one and wants everyone alive to remain alive this again is queen anne mother of mary la Estrada mission in san antonio texas a painting Here's a Virgin Mary. And so now we have the, the, the Abraham religions have now conquered uh, the great uh, pagan religions and the God, the God Pan has died and all the ancient uh, 
Zeus and all the ancient gods cried and said the god Pan is now dead, the half man and, and half goat running around in the, in, in the forest with seducing nips with his magical flute. So now we're, we're uh, into mother consciousness that is dominated by father consciousness. And we have the Virgin Mary uh, painted by John Van Eyck. The red of a robe symbolizes spiritual eros and only the good mother was allowed. Death mother was not. Virgin is the positive good mother. The negative aspects were given to the witch. So the good mother brings to birth and nourishes children and rabbits and fish and bulls. And it deals with infinite things. And the, the goddess Dimitri and Iris mothers who are all about the children. The oven is her womb. And I would want to say something about that in the fairy tale of Hansel and Gretel. That's a good example of Gretel. And, and Hansel, uh, the masculine and feminine working together to outsmart the witch and throw her in through the oven and, and they could be they could be born from that. Uh, she's, a, she's the mother of the joyful spiral in the colors of rust and brown and red. And she, she likes men, but she, she likes them as her children. And of course, we live in South Texas, so this is an iconic image of the Virgin of Guadalupe. I've painted many times. I didn't paint this. This is a ceramic piece, but you can see little bits of uh, glass in all different colors making up this mosaic. It comes from the backyard of a good friend of mine uh, uh, who's no longer with us, Miss Julie. And Julie and I used to drive all over Mexico uh, painting and photographing and being enveloped in, in the many mothers, all three mothers in Mexico, and uh, the good mother, the death mother, and the ecstatic mother. And when I went to see her the last time before she passed, she was in Alzheimer's home. She was 92. And I went to see her. I couldn't go before because of the pandemic. But I tell this story because I want to honor her because in this image, um, I brought pictures from her garden because she had this beautiful garden and home and I showed her all these pictures and I was sitting there with her and she says, I don't know you. I don't know why you're here. I don't know any of these pictures and I would go through them. I don't know that. I don't know that. She was getting irritated, so I was about to stop. And then I had this picture of this Virgin of God, Lupi. She says, I know that. Now, just think about that a minute in terms of the collective unconscious, very important. And so now we're going into the night. How are we on the time? Okay, I, I've got a timekeeper here because I, I could go on. We're into the nighttime. We have the owl, which is the wonderful symbol of the dark mother uh, and her baby. And there's the moon. And this is the transformative. Remember, we started with the elementary mother and those are the ancient pagan mothers and, um, the, and, and the vessels, the vessel, the womb, the great ram. Well, this is the transformative character of the death mother. That's the other part of the feminine. You have the elementary and you have the transformative. And now we're entering into the transformative character of the death mother. And, um, this is Lilith, goddess of death, a summer from 2000 BC. And it's the transformative feminine. You can see the two owls down below. Uh, the transformative dynamic of the death mother expresses a very dynamic element of the psyche. She is the opposite from the elementary feminine. Archetypally, the death mother drives toward change emergence into transformation. She's all about we're both present at the same time with changing dominance. The patriarchy does not recognize the presence of both. So the Abraham religions 
do not recognize the pressure of both. So now that we're in the dark uh, area and one of the, the death mother's main jobs is uh, taking care of, of, of grief and, and loss and grief and death. Like for instance, hospice care would be the care of the death mother. And it's transformative. Uh, and is integrated with the elementary mother uh, by the womb. And I wanted to say something about the participation mystique that when, when the child is born, um, the uh, mother and child bond, and that's a transformative moment. And so we now have the Egyptian goddess Nut, N-U-T, and it's from second century AD, Tibius. And she's connected to the great mother, the container of all life, and she embraces the body of the deceased. So on one side of this image is the place, is the body, and the other side is the image. Um, so it would be your left. Um, and, and the right is the actual deceased. And she's there to care for the deceased as they go into transform into the next realm. Here's a Piatta, Italian Piatta. Of course, that's the Virgin Mother holding the, the dead body of Jesus. And I put this in here to show this transition and, 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 and coming together of the, of, of the Virgin Mother and then the Good Mother, the elementary mother, the caretaker with the Death Mother. And the Piatta is sort of this coming together of both of those things. It's really... Uh, dynamic. And of course, contemporary artists like Frida Kahlo uh, from Mexico understood this really well in all of her art. And the death mother and the good mother and the ecstatic mother were present in all of her art. And here she's, this is her own Piata. I really love this image. And uh, she's being cared for by the death mother and she she lived with the death mother every day and it informed most of her artwork i want to say this about uh, the death mother let me go back one with frida this transform transformative character i want you to hold on to that word and the changing of the seasons and the death mother movement within the unity between life and death. Like the day of the dead is just around the corner, I guess in a couple of days, next Tuesday. So this is a perfect time to think about that. In Mexico, they really, they really celebrate the transformation to the other side. And the anima development, the, the muse, the, the anima, Young's anima in the in the psyche of the male masculine other movement of the unity of life and death, and it can often manifest manifest as negative and hostile, which we're about to see. It's very provoking and compelling us to change. It has an intense personality can change. It assists in death and grief, which we just saw with the uh, the first the other slide. And the death mother's job is to end everything the good mother has brought to birth. So she's the other side. It's like the Euroboros coming completely around in alchemy, the snake eating its tail. And I don't know why that popped in because I just have too much stuff in my brain. Sorry. But that's for another talk, which I'd love to do. And here's Medusa. This is that... This is the one I just referred to as negative and hostile. The force field of dangerous death mother energy, snakes rising uh, from her head turned any man that looked at her into stone. A very, a very frightening death mother. And we call her the stone mother. Medusa's strong force is too great for any man. He feels himself being pulled back into the elementary mother's great round where it's dark and he feels being back in that unconscious. He, he wants the light, he wants that razor sharp, cool 
uh, I think therefore I am light. It's like um, humans froze, froze in the face of the stone mother. Stone mother's gaze turned to stone often with alcohol and dr hard drug use. That's an example. Medu Medusa leaves boy men permanently stone. We can see that in uh, our culture today. There are among the these are among the weapons, the drugs and alcohol uh, taking over one's life uh, addictions or weapons of this mother. This is my opinion, but Western culture's fate is to face this dead death mother and, and stay intact. And oh, I love this mother. <laughs> this is one of the death mothers. Teeth mother. Uh, teeth mother is a South American, this is a South American mask. This death mother has teeth protruding out of her face, as you can see. It has Roman and Native Americans both in, in my reading, I read this, I actually read this, and in Roman and Native American cultures, both they put teeth in the vagina images symbolizing the death mother. And I looked and looked and I, not, I could not find those images and I really wanted to. Uh, in Mexico, uh, not in Mexico, in Vietnam, uh, this, this um, um, story of the teeth mother, v Vietnam veterans told stories of Vietnamese women who were reported to have put razor blades inserted into their vaginas. And I tried to figure out how that would work. But uh, anyway, it's an urban tale from, from the Vietnam uh, era. Um, a really uh, phenomenal mother, this mother. And here's a, a picture of painting by the 1960s abstract expressionist, one of my favorite artists, William de Kooning, and he did a whole series on the death mother. Uh, uh, and you can see this, her teeth and her face. And is everybody scared now, ready for Halloween? <laughs> we got more. I love, uh, you know, I love the death mother. Uh, in India, the death mother Kali, which we're all familiar with, is celebrated and honored. Kali with her stiff tongue and her teeth. She has absorbed the dark, transformative, again, that word, chthonic feminine power. Come on in time. Okay. Kali destroys, and but she destroys with a purpose. She destroys when masculine power destroys Gaia, the great mother. And we can see that happening all over in our in what's happening in our world and on, on the earth right now. And of course, we can't leave out serpent skirt from um, the Mexican death mother, the Aztec earth goddess. She's symbol of the earth. She's both creator and destroyer. She has a skirt made of goddess snakes. These are all so vivid, all these images. Uh, they're so much fun and they're vivid and they're full of life. And you can see how they are transformative the opposite of the elementary mother. And of course we ha can't leave out my favorite witches. Uh, we love the witch in fairy tales. The dominant culture allows us the feminine as the witch, the darker feminine gets to be the witch, the evil stepmother. And she, we get to do all the stuff instead of being the nice, sweet, good mother, or nice person, always pleasing people, we get to be destructive and manipulative and we get to dark, cast dark past powerful spells and steal children and eat them and apple poisoning and other devilish deeds. All of this we do to transform. And here's Baba Yaga and there's her hut with chicken legs and skulls around on the post and she's coming back from her night of checking the world out at night. And then of course we love Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. And this is a powerful energetic force that works in tandem with psychological movement in the psyche. And you could see the whole Dorothy and the Wizard of Oz. It's all coming to that point when she meets the, the witch uh, in, the, in the castle. And, and she has to figure out how to get in charge of her own inner witch, her own death mother, in order to psychologically be prepared for the water to be thrown on. 
she throws the water because she's upset uh, with the witch and the witch uh, melts. And now she is uh, individuated that darkness within herself. And so she can now recognize it in the world and recognize it in herself and not project it, hopefully. And of course, the good, the good witch uh, who came down and said, well, just look at and as do we. And of course, we love the story I referred to earlier, the chaotic feminine force field that moves the plot forward is uh, Hansel and Gretel meeting the old lady in the wood with the house full of candy. And we know how that story went. These fairy tale witches represent a powerful energetic force. And they create psychological movement and transformation. And now we get to the fun one, the fun mother. Let's go there. Nauman, is it Nauman? Yeah. The great mother in his book, The Great Mother, suggests that uh, this third mother is so important. And if we want to experience mother energy the ancient, as the ancients did, we must engage the ecstatic mother. Her intense mental and spiritual powers cross the life death line of the good mother and the death mother. So the abundant mother is the ecstatic mother. Here's a Mycenaean example uh, uh, with the deer and she's got a smile on her face and a beautiful garment and she's and it's like it's moving it's carved out of rock it's a, the ecstatic mother has intense mental and physical movement until in, you go into ecstasy and you're dancing in nature and pure, pure joy radiates from her Greece call the Greece call her the muse abundant creativity and she rejuvenates the life force for men and women so that's really a very important mother. And even here in, in the 21st century, there's an, um, uh, a movement called the Static Dance. It's an international movement. It, they have it here in Austin. And people go there and it, it's, a place, it's a place where we, the, 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 the woman can go and and be fully in her aesthetic mother safely and there's no drugs or alcohol allowed and everybody uh, respects everyone's space and it's just a large room of all these people dancing and celebrating the aesthetic mother i've never been but i probably should go isadora duncan is a, a wonderful example she changed the dance world with free spirit aesthetic dance movements and the muse and the soul of the man, she's she's was able to re, re, radiate that energy outward. And you know, the the reality is, without the ecstatic mother, all poetry comes from the ecstatic mother. Without the muse of the ecstatic mother, poems are flat. My paintings fail, and talks like this just won't even work and penetrate into y'all's unconscious because. Uh, and consciousness because I wouldn't be inspired by it. And so I had to be inspired. And of course, doing the paintings helped do that and the research helped do that. So she has a job, the ecstatic mother, to inspire us and, and uh, make it all work so well, this human journey we're on. Other ecstatic mothers are Sophie, the goddess Sophie. She's the goddess of art and literature and humanities. You wanna to come to her home because she has beautiful, lovely wines and foods and intellectual talk and people uh, dancing and music and books. Uh, Artemis was the keeper of, uh, uh, the keeper of um, the forest animals and uh, pregnant women. And she also, if there, someone was in trouble, she took care of that for them. Maybe the first abortions, I don't know. Just remember the ecstatic mother's job is she's to bring us as, spirit into the world not children she is the abundant mother on a spiritual plane and men in patriarchies try 
to deny the truth that creative, creativity flows from feminine consciousness. But it is part of, maybe it's part of the continuing fight with the dragon with, from the mother from ancient time is why they can't acknowledge that. I know Dante in, in the, his, his great poem, the, his aesthetic mother is Beatrice and men and women alone together enjoy, that's, that's the aesthetic mother there. And asked Henry David Thoreau, he said, if a man alone has no money, friends, and the aesthetic mother arrives, then he needs nothing. It's very powerful. So let's look at Woodstock and bring this more from antiquities into our time. And in the late 50s and 60s in the United States, a movement began to return to the mother. As a patriarch, the only mothers that were allowed in the culture were the good mother and the ecstatic mother. The fathers were considered evil. That was back during the Vietnam War and all the people doing the wars were men and they were evil. The hippie gener but the hippie generation's Woodstock was a good mother, a static mother gathering. So you can see all of these people there listening to music and dancing and uh, with the ecstatic mother and return to the earth, all the 70s, all the earth movement, uh, 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 all kinds of women's consciousness and feminism came alive then. How are we on time? Break. Okay, here's a, a wonderful ecstatic mother dancing at Woodstock. So the reality is, like the, the mysterious reality, I should say, is all three of these mothers are here all the time. Death mothers are standing right next to ecstatic mothers and good mothers. And we must allow the downward pull that we're so afraid of and feel these shadow figures standing alongside her sisters. Americans don't believe in the death mother, even after we experience their wrath. I told several friends of mine from high school, I was doing this talk and they said, well, there's no, why do you want to talk about the death mother? <laughs> because she's transformative. So we've got to love them all and work with them. And it, that Americans don't believe in the death mother because we experience her wrath. And we can see that this is my opinion in school shootings and, and, and the wildfires and floods and the drug deaths and the attack on women's health. Um, we might wanna think about that. So how long have we gone? Okay, so now we're getting toward the end and um, we're gonna take a five minute break. And um, when you come back, we have a little video and then we're going to have a conversation. I hope everybody's got lots of questions because there's more to say, all right? So five minute break and I'm gonna set up the video during the break, all right? Thank y'all. Okay, now what do I do? Huh? You're still sharing. Leave it there for a minute. To, um, in five minutes. No, do it now. Right. Don't turn it on. But... Okay. Um, unshare screen. Oh, unshare Wait, screen. First, go up there and do um, uh, exit full screen, as your view. Where? Uh, um, Under view. Yeah. Then exit full screen. Exit full screen. Yeah. Okay. And then um, take, uh, go out of. Um, what do I do? Um, exit. Uh, did you exit full screen? Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, now go to. Our little thing here. Okay, the next to the okay. This is what's come up. Okay. It's not. 
Where did it go? It all disappeared. Um, okay, so we will go um, to the Malcolm King See Your Mouth. Um, stop here, go up here, stop share. You want to share screen? Yeah, yeah stop, stop share. share. I'm gonna go pee while you figure that out. Okay. We can go ahead and start it. Okay. Okay, so share screen. Share screen. Yeah. Okay, now the video. notes back out again and uh, 
There's a lot of food for thought. I think, therefore, I am. I have breasts, therefore, I am. So which camp are you guys in and you want to talk about it? So are we open? So yes, and we have questions in the chat as well. Okay. So would you like to start with those first? Yes. All right, so we have a question from Zon, I believe. I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly. And the question is, how can Western culture properly face the death mother? Well, uh, Jung would say each of us individually have to individuate that death mother and so that we don't act it out and project it onto our culture. And uh, the things, I mean, you know, that the good mother loves the earth and the, the, the uh, elementary mother, uh, the death mother wants us all to pay attention to. She's there to shake it up and to transform what's not working like Cal Kali. The way we can is individually within ourselves, not project out uh, our own darkness. And we can see that darkness being projected out all over the world right now. Uh, onto onto mothers and children <laughs> a lot unfortunately in in families and uh, so we have to do our individual work and then we work in community questions thank you jump thank in you. so we we have another one from nancy russell in the chat um how do you see the role of the death mother playing out in the war on Ukraine? Well, you know, uh, Russia is often referred to as, as the great mother, you know, and uh, she's been, she's hijacked by the fear of the masculine consciousness, that fear of, uh, of not having control and not being you know seeing everything the way they that in a razor sharp way and uh so a lot of that's hack being acted out for us and in fact we're kind of letting them play that role which is really a dangerous game for them between the death mother and the good mother, and there's no ecstatic mothers over there right now, unfortunately, which could be that uh, movement that help between life and death. That line that I talked about earlier. If someone would like to have a conversation with me about a question, then, you know, I'd be glad to let them come up on the screen and then I could talk with them directly. Absolutely. So uh, if, if you can raise your virtual or your literal hand, if you want to chat that is welcome. We also, we're still having some questions here in the chat as well. Oh, sure. Sure. Just go ahead. Okay. Um, there from Roberta, there's a thank you for the ecstatic mother uh, for Halloween weekend. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Thank goodness for her. And then this question from Sandy, how do we bring balance to death mothers overly destructive energies? Well, it seems, it seems we, Victoria that it, we need a little that there needs to be a mix of masculine in there too. Well, it know, abso that, absolutely you know. that that's they had to get out of the great round or we'd still be back there. It had to happen. Right. But it could, we could be overshooting the mark. <laughs> You know, and 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 the whole hippie generation was a call back to the good mother, but we still, you know, we're the guys in the white hats. We don't want to deal with the dark hats, you know. And uh, um, I'm not afraid of uh, of the death mother. In fact, I'm only afraid of her if I don't acknowledge her. You know, it's the acknowledgement within ourselves and in our culture and in our communities uh that this is going on and that we don't need to project our own inner death mother teeth mother stone mother onto others if we acknowledge it within ourselves 
now and we can transform it. We can use the transformative energy of the death mother. Does that help? <laughs> I don't know. I, I'm I'm thinking there still needs to be addressing the 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 good masculine or the or the direct. It seems like if if it gets out of balance, that the death mother. If there's too much transformation, that when things are uh, well, that's true. The chaos can happen. This uh -huh. creativity and chaos go right together. And chaos. There's a lot of chaos right now. Uh -huh. uh, and, and you're, you're right in that, that masculine consciousness. And I think I, I did talk about that mass when father consciousness embraces the spiritual mother, mother, it is at its highest when it's crude and rejects the spiritual mother destroying with aggression and domination. It's at its worst. So, uh, it's the concentration, I think what I'm hearing you refer to is the concentration of these mother's energies. If there's too much concentration of death mother energy or too much uh -huh. concentration of good mother energy or too much ecstatic, then we get into yeah. Dionysus and Bacchus. Right. You know? and, right. and so it's a, it, it, it is a balance and it is, it's, it's a tension of opposites that we've got to learn to, to do, use the ecstatic mother in a wise way to dance between these two opposite mothers, death mother and good mother. You know, I mean, it, it, any of these, if there's too much concentration is very dangerous. You're exactly right. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Any more chats? Actually quite a few, yes. <laughs> I'll be glad to talk with anybody and we can go deeper. Yeah, and feel free to come off uh, off mute when I'm bringing up your question to have a discussion. So this is from Kalina. Uh, and the question is, so is the slaying of the dragon imagery, the death mother slaying the masculine in patriarchy? Is that your- No, the, the slaying of the dragon is the hero's journey that the masculine needs to take. In uh, all the fairy tales and the myths, they, 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 they have to slay something. Uh, they have to outsmart the evil witch. They have to they 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 have to find their uh, their their they have to get out of the elementary mother, the 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 vessel mother, the great realm, the ancient mother. They have to get out of that dark unconscious place, the Manilian brain, and develop the cortex brain that we now use so beautifully. And the reason that it's good is because we're able to talk right now, all of us in different parts of Austin and uh, elsewhere, Wimberley. <laughs> so, so we're using that wonderful, sharp, light, bright, masculine consciousness in, in, in the cortex part of the brain, we're using it, but it's not in an end in itself. It's, it, it's what Sandy talks about that, that balance. I see. I'm not able to. Uh, I'm not able to turn on my video, and I don't even know if I have my audio on right. <laughs> who am, who am I talking to? And this this is, is Kalina, Kalina, and I'm from San Marcos. Oh, um, good. Oh, good. Yeah. So I've never used Zoom before, so I'm having technical <laughs> difficulties. Well, congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. I, I used to be in Austin, and I used to attend the meetings in person. Um, mm -hmm. I'll, that was quite a few years ago. So I thought this is my first one to attend and I've not used Zoom. Um, so thank you so much for providing this for us. Um, but I, yes, I'm experiencing a little uh, that technical problems on my end, but um, thank you for answering that. Um, well, and <laughs> that your technical problems on your end is a perfect example of how we have to, we have to work them both. <laughs> Yeah, we, we don't want to just kick the baby out with the bathwater, the wonderful male uh, bright energy, you know, um, after right. all, in the, in the, in the caves, uh, before there was, we could make light, they were in this dark rubbing these two flints together, totally frustrated about the, in these opposite parts of their nature. And then light happened. So, um, you know, we have to do that tension of the opposites as we do the dance between these mothers and move about. Right. So good for you for tackling, 
good for you from San Marcos for Thank tackling, you. tackling father consciousness in order to get to learn about mother consciousness. <laughs> that makes a lot of sense. Yes. Think about it. <laughs> Thank you. Questions. So we have another one from Roberta in the chat. Uh, and the question is, since the great denial in these difficult times seems to be overpopulation, how do you feel these three mother archetypes can guide us into a sustainable future for humankind? Well, I think it, I think it's the only way <laughs> we're going to be guided. And, and so I think we need to start paying really attention within our own natures and the nature of the world, the, our neighborhoods. I think we need to get back to regional, uh, uh, you know, all politics is local and we start really building that community. Uh, that's what I love so much about the Young Society is that they, they wanted to put the soul back in to Austin, you know, and, uh, and build a community around that. And I think that's these great themes that we're talking about, the great mother, death mother, ecstatic mother, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, tra transitional mother, the transitional feminine, and the elementary feminine. These are great themes, but if you take them and look at them at, in your day, as you go about your day and who you interact with and what you choose to do, you may be surprised how it kind of informs. And one of the things about the, the aesthetic mother that's so important is getting back into the in, into the body. And I think that might be a real clue because after all, we are the earth and the earth is us. We, we were in the mother and every community, every culture is in the mother. And uh, so we're in the body and we need to be in our bodies. And I know that when I work with clients that are suicidal, the first thing I do is somatic work and try to get them to be in their bodies. EMDR is basically somatic work to try to get the brain to, you know, I think therefore I am, I'm breast, therefore I am. Get those two things reconnected. You know, and the tapping, that tapping we do for trauma and, all, and the breath work and the little, the little, um, the breath work we did at the beginning of this is get back in your body. And if I can get a person to really feel their body, uh, the body always wants to remain, have integrity. It always wants to have integrity. So if that person can find the integrity of their body and their breath, in their uh, touching, in their walking about, um, they're gonna wanna stay here more because the body's gonna, gonna work with them. And that is the elementary mother that's, she's, she's she's solid, she's firm, she's got these big haunches that she's not gonna fall over, you know? We need them both. So, the, so the, I was very happy to hear you introduce the concept of the ecstatic mother. Yes. Uh, I know a little bit about Neumann, but I've never heard that quite explained. And I've not seen visuals to go with it. The ancient symbol you had of the bare-breasted woman with her beautiful skirt dancing with the deer, for instance. And those of us who've chosen to live in Wimberley have chosen to live with the deer. We have yes, in sure. a way, we have gone back to the wild mother that Clarissa Pinkola Estes talks about right. the wild woman. Yes. So to enter, uh, it seems to me that sometimes I feel guilty um, knowing how difficult these times are for so many people uh, to actually take time out to experience my joy, which I believe you would see is embodying the ecstatic mother. So, yes. and, yet, and yet I only feel that if we don't feel a joy in life, it's we're not going to have the hope and faith to create a sustainable future. Otherwise, why bother if life isn't joyful? And it's so true. I mean, we can't we can't live, we have to have them all. And the static mother is like, she connects the life and death line because she's of the body. 
So you're actually, you're talking about being in the body as the, ex, I call it the exquisite feminine when yes, we are lovely. happy. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Just when we are happy, yeah. exquisite feminine, when, when um, I feel that I am embodying my joy, uh, I actually have a glimpse or a sense of what the divine feminine might be. And I know that from being loved by what you might call an ecstatic and expired man. Um, I think one of the first people I ever heard talk about that was Joseph Campbell, mm -hmm. when he talked about um, the maturing man could embrace the real woman upon whom he had projected his anima. That's and, right. and the woman upon whom, whom, who had projected her anima been attracted to that man could embrace the real man um, behind her. And what Joseph Campbell did in that lecture was he actually showed them dancing together. And it eventually it, in the lecture, he actually moved his hands like this, yeah, which was so beautiful. Kind of like, yeah. Yeah, because he was married to Gene Erdman, who was a dancer. That's right. And, and he talked about that quite a few times in his lectures. So I, I feel blessed that I found such a, a man in my life who allowed me to be totally myself. And to be that's beautiful. So you, that you found a man that could uh, celebrate the, uh, the, the, the ecstatic and the spiritual and the creativity of the feminine. Yeah, and he could um, allow me to be Kali also if I disagree yeah, with him. Yeah, so good. <laughs> Keep the spice going. <laughs> Yeah, that's Very what occurred. If you don't really have an occasional argument, then all the passion is gone from your relationship. Yeah, you don't have an occasional. Yeah, I believe Marion Woodman talked about that very beautifully. Yes, she did. Yes, that's a beautiful. That's really beautiful. I'm really happy. You know, when when the 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 ecstatic mother is also when men and women are together in joy. You know. Yes. That is, that's his that and they can, as Joseph Campbell said when yeah, they, 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 you, they come together in joy yeah right. they if, he said if you can't accept the real person then the the projection will just slip away and you that's won't have that's that's you won't have a dancing relationship yeah, with them. eventually it just it's just archetypal possession <laughs> yes not, not in love with a human person yeah do we have another uh Where's, where's my uh, reader of the chat? Thank you yes. for that, dear. <laughs> yes. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you. We do have it. We have quite a few other questions here. Okay, so we have another one from Alan. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you recommend for mothers in refugee camps that are losing hope? Oh what God. mother energy would you recommend? Oh, wow. Well, they've, they've got to go. Uh, you know, it's that Maslow's hierarchy of need. They need to be, they're, they're at the lower chakra of just trying to survive, but we've got to bring them up um, to the second chakra, which is uh, their, their creativity and, and create com a mother community for them maybe in a circle, <laughs> like the grandmothers did for the Native Americans, you know, always in a circle and find, mm -hmm. you know, help them, that, that help them find their ecstasy again, joy again in life. You know, because what, what, who was it you, son? It's, I can't, one of you said, uh, without that, we can't change anything because we need that movement. You know, yeah. and we need that the death, they're facing the death mother and there can be transformation in that for them, but they're going to need a lot of help with the ecstatic mother and the good mother's going to be working really hard with UNICEF and other things, trying to m make sure there's food, you know, so they're in the, they're in the thick of it for sure. Next question. Thank you. Yeah, so I've, we've got some second questions from some people, but I'm gonna skip down because I think this is Glenda's first question here. Uh, do you have a suggestion for a resource uh, to explore more about these different mothers? 
Well, I will put, I, I, I looked at five different books. And so I will put that on my website and this, this talk will be on my website, drvictoria.net spelled out. And I will have all of the uh, uh, references there that I use for this talk. Um, and so hopefully that's a good place to start. It's, it's, a, it's a wide and deep, comfort, deep uh, resource. I mean, just Joseph Campbell alone and Pincus Estes that someone mentioned her, all of these, uh, all of these deal with all of these mothers these people so uh but those four books are sort of uh uh where a lot of they got their information from they're sort of, sort of original resource so i have a four or five i think young symbols and things like that how about the goddess and every woman by jean shinoda Olin? oh i love i i i think that's that's all all of jean all of her books are wonderful with the goddess and she's got the goddess in younger women and older women and she's also got some wonderful books on the I Ching which I highly recommend and the I Ching in my reading I, I didn't put it in the talk but it, the I Ching and astrology are two of the things left over from the elementary mother and so uh, uh, she uses the I Ching often in with clients in session. She came to the Young Center in Houston once, and I, oh, I'm still kicking myself that I didn't get to go. She's a good speaker. She's an incredible speaker. I've heard her twice. Mm -hmm. she, Very she's powerful. Been, she's the only Jungian analyst that's been the keynote speaker at the American Art Therapy Association twice. I believe that. Yeah, I believe there are that. so many art therapists who are Jungian oriented. Yes, that's I do because, a lot of art therapy too. Yeah. Because of man and his symbols, et cetera. Yeah, all those all those wonderful images. What's another question from a new person? Yes, we have another question from uh, Zahn. Uh, what do you think is causing the increase in death mother energy in our culture? It, uh, ignoring her. Ignoring her. Ignoring it when you feel it in yourself and not projecting it on to the people and the, your world around you, ignoring her. We've been ignoring her for too long and now it's the genie's out of the, out of the jar, you know? She's like Kali running around. So. Thank you for answering. Um, <laughs> hi. So I, hi, um, in Austin, uh, my name's my name's David, but I go online by Zon. Okay. Um, bye. Yeah. And um, sorry, it's my first time uh, in this kind of uh, event. I like, joined this when it was still going on, like a pandemic. So, um, yeah. I understand. yeah. And um, I suppose I, I had another, maybe a follow up question. Sure. And um, <laughs> so I, oh, excuse me. Um, I'm 27. And so I'm like, more I grew up more in like the online space with like um you know pretty much like YouTube and the internet and um play a lot of video games and um so I guess the question would be like I feel like I've noticed that at least in the in like newer media that I've played that I feel like this sort of death mother archetype has sort of been more prevalent um especially there's a there's a more recent um it's like a game but it's sort of it's technically a visual novel called um doki doki literature club that got really popular and it's sort of i feel like it's sort of a psychological horror mm -hmm. and there's a character there who i believe it feels like to me like sort of embodies this sort of kind of thing you're describing this uh theme i suppose mm -hmm. and i don't know it made me think a lot about like what you're saying and I feel like it's true to an important degree that there is sort of like something going on. And I think that like, we can see, I don't know if you believe this, but do you know about like, um, do, you, do you think that fiction sort of is like a mirror to like the, the world that we live in? Like, sort of like how a dream is like the, it'll show us things that we maybe don't acknowledge 
like in our own Absolutely. lives. Absolutely, uh, creativity uh, is this one of the main main reasons for creativity. This is purpose it serves is to make real tangible something that is so hard to make tangible. So yes, dreams, fiction, poet, poetry, music, video games. When I work with teenagers and, and since the pandemic, I've been working in their bedrooms basically with they're online, I'm online and I have them show me the games they're playing and they, their whole personality changes. Hmm. They are these meek little young women, a young man just kind of doesn't feel like they connect and, and then they are playing these games and I point out to them, well, you were the, you were the king or you were the queen and you ran the show. And so something is going on. I think you're right. Okay. Yep. Um, thank you. Yeah. I just, I think that like, for me, at least that, that one I mentioned, that specific one, mm -hmm. um, that there was that character who sort of like, definitely, I feel like they embodied that sort of what you're describing in this. I had never heard of this sort of like death mother before like this talk. So I, I feel like maybe um, it might be more complicated than that because there's like different layers in this novel of like mm -hmm. perspective. And so like, but I think, um, yeah. And uh, I kind of want to learn more about it. So like, yeah, I think, and, but the fact that I feel like it's showing up in that, that game got so popular. Very important that it's showing up. Yeah, um, that it got so the re, the feel like the popularity of it sort of testifies to that. Like what you're saying is true. That like there's this, um, what's it called? But you say you said um, it's like um, increasing. In in one like, yeah. So that maybe there is, is there so maybe we're longing, in the young people we're longing for the death mother. Mm -hmm. You know we're longing for transformation for sure yeah could that, could that tell us what game that is where there's a focus on the death mother yeah so it's a psychological horror technically that's the the genre but it's a visual novel um and it's called doki doki literature club and it's it's a bit of a tricky kind of presentation of a, of a novel because it doesn't present as being um a, sort of like the psychological you know game or horror but like you get to a point in it where the the character I tell you about she sort of just like asserts herself in front of you and like you know she says all these things that like kind of test you and like kind of make you rethink about mm -hmm. reality you know but not necessarily you know it's sort of like a, a dialogue basically between you and this character and she breaks the fourth wall as well. So like, it's to me in my mind, this is sort of what, like when you're describing this archetype is what I see. And maybe that's a connection that- The, the word is transformative character. Yeah, transformative. A transformative character. And boy, that's probably pretty important right now to pay attention to. And it seems okay. like these games are paying attention. It's good. Thank you so much. That was a great discussion. Do we have another question? We do, we do. Can I, I would like to say too, what's emerging for me right now with this dis destroyer energy is in that how the destroyer goddess is like enough, enough overconsumption, enough of this, enough of that, like limits to what yes. we can take. Yeah, I love it. It's such a rich discussion. Thank you. This is amazing. So we do have another question. Uh, we have two more here from one uh, from uh, another one from Roberta. Um, how does the great round of the primal mother relate to the great round of the mandala with its four positions and its cycle, birth, life, death, and the sacred void for renewal and transformation? Is there a fourth mother of the sacred void? Um, you know, in my reading, I, I know exactly what you're talking about. And Robert Bly, which is one of the books, I, it's a poetry book that I got a lot of the ideas from for the contemporary stuff. He talks about a fourth mother, but I had a hard time. Uh, uh, I think it's what it is, is the great mother. And then there's the good mother, the ecstatic mother and the death mother. 
So maybe the great mother is the fourth mother. That's the overarching mother. Uh, I couldn't find a, a fourth mother equal to these three. Maybe she is the one you alluded to that comes from um, the ancient instinct when we go back in the cave, which mm -hmm. an ancient ritual that uh, was symbolic and for some early uh, of going back into the cave. So I wonder if the sacred void of the Eastern religions is um, uh, the equivalent of going back into nothingness even before we were born. I don't know if that- Well, it, it's, that, kind of al al it's an alchemical question. This is alchemy where we've now gone because it's, it's like we come full circle. I was talking with a friend about this, the idea of infinity, but we do, we come, we, and that is the mandala. You know, we come full circle and the Euaborus, the snake eating his tail, and we enter, we, we are reborn over and over and over again. Well, you, re you referred, you kept referring to the great round as the mother. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm only familiar with the great round of the mandala. So I was wondering what the source of that was. Is that Neumann? Neumann. Okay. Mm -hmm. So maybe he knows. Great, great round is the womb, the cave, the, the belly of the mother holding the child. And that it's a symbolic for uh, the unconscious. Hi, this is, this is Jamie. I'm sort of cutting in here. Um, sure. And I'm wondering whether there's an integration of the three that would be the fourth. Because no. we, can't, we can't imagine three distinct aspects. I mean, you can, but obviously they have to interweave. I mean, I mean Kali in, in Hindu mythology is, you know, she's the one with all the... the skulls and the blood and everything but she's a very tender mother also she's a very tender mother all of these mothers have double natures or triple natures and, triple she, natures and, and she was created when the male gods could not kill a certain monster and they each gave a certain part to themselves to durga who then created kali to kill this monster or a demon, whatever. So, you know, I think, and I think about um, anytime I, I meet a new mother of a new baby and she's never ever thought of like, just, you know, just leaving it alone or stuffing a pillow, whatever, you know, I, I used to just think of, oh, I used to put my kid in the freezer for a while. Um, it, it seems unreal to me. It seems like being a mother also brings out you know, that sort of some of that anger and also sure. some of that joy and ecstasy. Absolutely, all of and, that. And I think that um, it's important to realize that these things are, are not so distinct. Well, and that, and I do refer to that, 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 that the, the, tra the trans, the transcending mother, the, the death mother is in cahoots with the good mother. I mean, mm -hmm. they're working together for this consciousness and to, to create movement. And this is the participation mystique that I did refer to. I didn't go into great depth. That's, that's almost like a whole talk in itself. But when the ch child is born, the, 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 the bond between the mother and the child creates uh, transformation. So, so, so that transformation of the, of the deaf mother is working in tandem with, with the good mother and with who wants always to live life, the integrity of the body. They're working in tandem with them. It's very beautiful. It is very beautiful when you think about it, isn't it? Yeah. And I'm grateful myself. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, thank, can I say thank you, Jamie? Sure. This is Lilita, because we were viewing these archetypes in the macro uh, cosmos, so to speak. You know, the the war and destruction, the flood, yes. the, the abortion rights, etc. But it helped me see that those three archetypes are within me. That simplified everything. Like me as a young mom wanting to kill my child 
thinking, I am such a sweet person, right? How can that be? So thanks <laughs> for doing that. And I'm also full of life and dance. And I dance tango, by the way. And that music was not tango. So you need to take it. <laughs> I don't know. It felt like tango to me. So I was going with it. <laughs> so in any case, thank you. I love that. That's true, what you just said, that if, it, if we can recognize them, this, that's the reason to explore these large themes, because it helps us with our existential angst of being these tiny little beings on this huge planet and running around doing all this stuff we're doing, <laughs> for better or for worse. And so, so if we can, we can connect to these great themes, they can hold it for us. So it, it helps our existential angst. Uh, I, I'm going to ju jump in just sure. a minute with, with uh, the thing about death and, and death is attributed to men generally and, and is uh, uh, sanctioned, especially in time of war. Uh, for men as the defender or man as the protector. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me this is what it is for a woman who is deciding to have an abortion. That's woman taking the role of protector and, and using death mm -hmm. in yes. self-defense. Yes, and that's beautifully put. We can't, we have to talk, we need to talk about it just like you did. Mm -hmm. Instead of all this emotional, I mean, right. reactionary, let's talk about it. It's, we're all human together figuring this out. Yes. And you can't have birth without death. That's right. It's, it's a vicious um, and beautiful, both at the same time. And giving birth can be a life death challenge. Right. Uh, Often. To, yes. And um, to me, I've met, I've talked to two young women who wanted to have their tubes tied because they already had three children. And the doctors would not tie their tubes because they weren't 25 yet. And yet they were aware that they didn't have enough substance, they felt, to raise their children in this very challenging times that we're in. So I, both of them- It diff difficult for everyone, doesn't it? Yeah, All they these wanted rules to- and morality rules. <laughs> yes. And it was, it was men, both times it was men doctors telling them they would not help them limit their family so they could have a, a family of the wanted children that they felt they could handle. And, um, yes, we know that talk, unfortunately, only too well, that, that conversation about what, just this story you just told. And it's, 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 we need to continue to have that conversation because these are real human beings. How, do we have any more that, uh, questions that people put in the chat or someone else that wants yeah. to jump in that hasn't had a chance? We have one more question in the chat with a clarification on understanding correctly the elementary mother, the good mother, and the great mother. Are these the same? The elementary mother yeah. is elementary feminine. It's a characteristic. And I did that at the beginning to try to understand consciousness and the unconscious. Uh, so you have, think of it like a rainbow. There's the elementary mother rainbow. and the transitional oh, mother. Oh, oh. And then under that is, is the good mother, the death mother, and the ecstatic mother. And ah. over all of this is the great mother, Gaia, which is what Nauman broke down for me just in that way when I read his book. Does that help? I thought Aunt Gaia was the earth mother. The earth mother, she is, but she's okay. also the great mother. Okay. She's over all, over it all. Yeah. So do we have any more, any more questions? Is someone being left out? Um, no. It's, it's 830 and uh, I think it's maybe time to start wrapping up and everybody's going to 
about the time they need to take another pee break. <laughs> so maybe I'm talking about myself. Um, so any more questions, please refer to my website. I have a lot of other lectures on there that I've given at the Young Society I, on the witch, on archetypal possession, other things like this. Uh, um, so really thank you all for even trusting your evening with me. It's a really nice, intelligent group. And I had to be on my P's and Q's. Y'all are really smart. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> you threw some stuff back at me and I really appreciate that. <laughs> Got some smart cookies here. So uh, you guys are d doing some reading and I really appreciate that. Um, so if there's not any more questions, I'm going to turn it back over to, to Joe and they, they want to wrap up with some more information for the Young Society, I, I believe, right? Yes. Stephanie? Yes. And Joe, yeah. Mm -hmm. So thanks everybody and thank you, Dr. Vicki, for being here again. Um, I think we have the information about your website and all that information down in the chat. If anybody wants uh, CEUs for this, uh, you can just uh, email Sandy uh, Wilcox and she'll she'll get back to you about that. And then uh, Stephanie, were you, were you gonna tell us about what was coming up and how to get a recording of this if people needed it? So, well, the sure. Good, thank yeah, you. Yeah, I can do that. So uh, we'll send out a recording of this lecture. Um, through the same email that you received the Zoom link from. So we'll we'll get that out to you shortly um, and to everyone that registered for okay. the event uh, so that you can listen to it again and get in all the tidbits and all the wonderful imagery. And I just, I just wanna thank you again, Dr. Shackelford for just a rich presentation and so many ideas. It was, it was really wonderful. Thank you. I enjoyed then, it. It was fun. <laughs> Visit the mean with the mothers is it's, it's, it's intense, but I'm really glad that they're here. <laughs> yes, yes. Much to think about and much to dream about tonight. So yeah, that's right. And uh, yes, yeah, so we have another talk coming up. Correct. Um, uh, save the date for December 9th. Um, the, the talk is entitled Psyche's Insight, Illumination in Creation Myth and the Creative Process. Uh, I know Joseph Campbell came up quite a bit. Uh, Joanna is well, uh, one of the managing editors at the Joseph Campbell Foundation. So she will be talking about myth uh, and uh, the creative process and creation myth. So that is December 9th. And then am I missing anything else, Joe? I don't think so. I think that's great. Just that we want to say thank you to Dr. Vicki as we leave um, and let her know how much we enjoyed this event. Thank you, everybody, for trusting. Uh -oh. I want to thank the token man who showed up. I thank you, token man. Who asked that question? Go ahead. Someone here wants to know if he would spell the name of that game. She's curious. Oh, oh me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So it's uh, four words. Uh, the first, it's the same word twice as the beginning. It's do Doki, spelled D O K I. Okay. And and then it's again Doki, so Doki Doki, and it's Literature Club. Um, Doki Doki it, Literature, Literature Club. Club. Yes, it's a it's a free game that um, after you play, it's 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 taking. I would say it's a visual novel. That's like the formal formally. It's a visual novel, so it's more like a book, but it uses visuals like a video game, like sort of mm -hmm. like a. I would say it's like a play almost, where like as characters. And then there's a dialogue that you can read through. Um, and yeah, that's, <coughs> that's about it. That's great. Thank so we're all going to be playing video games after this. <laughs> Looking forward to that much. <laughs> Thank, you, Thank you. Thank you so much. Much. Hope Thank you, guys. Remember. Yeah. Thank you. Happy Halloween. You. Happy Thank Halloween you. weekend when the witch can Absolutely. come out and be ecstatic. Happy exciting the day of the dead. All kinds of stuff going on. <laughs> Bye, everybody. Thank you Bye. all. Bye. Thank you. Good night. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye, Nancy. Hope to see you Bye. Bye.